Hello, this video is going to walk through some of the uh, basic operation of printer vulnerabilities that were discovered by the Vectra Threat Labs team um, recently, and these cover the uh, 2016 CVE 3238 as well as the Microsoft uh, version of this vulnerability, MS16087. So before we get into the vulnerabilities themselves, it's probably worth describing a little bit of what led to these vulnerabilities. Obviously, organizations have many different users, many different printers, and users expect to be able to use any of those printers that they want to. Um, a user is going to show up in the office and say, hey, I want to go talk to this printer. They may move around, go somewhere else in the office, and naturally want to print to the uh, printer that's nearest them. Or you may just have uh, traveling employees who show up and expect to be able to print. All of this led to an issue where users need to be able to really quickly and easily connect to uh, each one of these printers without hopefully requiring the uh, assistance or authorization of an administrator. So instead of having the admins running around and uh, manually installing drivers or approving each one, the drivers are essentially delivered on demand from the printer or the print server uh, when the uh, right before the user needs them. So they just point to the printer that they want. The appropriate driver is going to be delivered to them, and everything in installs uh, uh, nice and easy. The problem with this approach and where uh, the vulnerability that we're going to focus on uh, today really starts to come into play is if an attacker gets inside the network and is able to replace the valid approved driver with a malicious file, <clears throat> that driver is going to be delivered to any anyone who tries to connect to that printer. So if the attacker puts a malicious file on that printer when a user connects to that printer uh, for the first time, he's going to get that malicious driver and here's the really interesting part. Since it's a system driver, that malicious code is going to be delivered and typically run without checks at the system level. So not even just a user level, it's going to be part of system for the attacker. And this allows the um, attacker to say, you know, open a remote shell, which is what we're uh, showing here, but pretty much do anything at system level that they want to write their malware to do. What's uh, worse yet is that this is your kind of standard watering hole. This process repeats itself over and over for each time a user tries to uh, newly connect to that printer. So this can go on indefinitely and it provides a really, really powerful way for an attacker to take a position inside the network and then spread to lots and lots of other hosts within that environment. So uh, what I'd like to do now is show you an example of this attack vector um, working in a virtual environment. So here we see um, a virtual environment where, we're gonna, where we can demonstrate this exploit. Um, on the right hand side of the screen we see the uh, attacker. Uh, this is his screen. He's going to be using uh, the Metasploit framework to uh, essentially open a remote shell to the victim once he's been successfully attacked. And on the left hand side we show the victim machine. So uh, what we will do is as we watch what's going on here we just want to show that this is a Windows 7 machine, but more importantly, we're going to uh, note the system name is Reverser, Reverser VN Test Local. That is the system name. Now, if we go in and do a quick check to see what we're running at as user, that name is Hacker. And what we're doing now is connecting to the print server just like you would install a normal printer for any device. It's now looking for the driver and that driver is a malicious driver that we've uh, implanted on that system. Now on the right hand side of the screen you can see that we now see the command shell to, is open and we're going to do a quick check to show that 
yes, we're not just seeing the user uh, account. We are at system level uh, that we saw in that early earlier screen, and now we can see everything uh, within that uh, within that system. So this gives us a really really powerful control over this machine. This machine is uh, owned at the system level. So with that example, you may be wondering, okay, so if the attacker was in the environment, how would he get the uh, that malicious driver on the printer in the first place? Um, and the answer is that there's actually several different options, and they're all very uh, readily accessible and fairly easy. First, he could do the straight-ahead approach of hacking the printer itself. Uh, printers have lots of services enabled on them. Finding an exploit um, or a finding a, a vulnerability to exploit typically isn't that difficult for an experienced attacker. The other thing that they can do is go the easy route and just directly log into the printer. A lot of printers uh, retain their default uh, login credentials. Admin, admin is sometimes common, but the uh, list is, is pretty short for understanding how to log into those devices and it may not require an exploit at all. So getting that malware on a uh, printer that you see inside the network typically isn't gonna be that difficult. The third option is that the attacker can just advertise a completely fake printer. This is something that's very easy to do. Uh, you can do it with a, uh, a little piece of hardware or just any, anything that you can use to connect to the network. You can spoof a printer and then users will accidentally uh, find that printer and be able to and, and try to connect to it. So the options are essentially to use a real printer and, and easily put a malicious file on it or advertise your own printer essentially created from scratch. So everything that we've talked about so far has really been focused on the attacker already being in the environment. Now, that's certainly um, a bad thing, but you may be thinking, well, if no one gets in my environment, this threat uh, really doesn't apply to me. Things get a lot more interesting once we realize that the same attack vector works over the internet. And this is really, really interesting because the same process works for the internet printing protocol as well as web point and print. Um, and this means that essentially we could, uh, an attacker could deliver the threat over any of these standard kind of web facing threat vectors such as a compromised web page, adding an ad, uh, a malicious ad to a web page. And this would allow that compromised page to deliver the driver in the background and again, repeat that same process that we saw inside the network, but now from the outside in. And once that attacker has control of a machine on the inside of the network, that naturally just fuels that same uh, set of behaviors that we saw earlier where he could spread laterally uh, far and wide inside that network. So this vulnerability is one that is incredibly important because it is something that can lead to an initial infection. Um, it's going to be um, something that could be very uh, silent and hard to detect, but also the attacker can use this same methodology to spread laterally and own the network uh, completely. So in terms of a targeted attack, in terms of an attack that's looking for key assets or critical information, this is a really, really powerful um, vulnerability. And it's very important to be able to uh, apply all the appropriate patches to address this vulnerability and also keep a very close eye on the behavior of traffic in your network. And it's a good reminder that those IoT devices like printers, Internet of Things, uh, even though you probably can't have AV on them or have uh, controls on them, these devices very much matter from a security standpoint. And it's super important to make sure that we remain vigilant. So let's now show what this uh, attack looks like as a demonstration uh, for the 
um, web point and print and IPP uh, attack vector. And here, very much like the previous demonstration, we have a similar arrangement. Um, attacker is on the right-hand side. The victim is going to be on the left-hand side. Um, again, we will walk through and show all of the same things in terms of uh, the system information, name of the system, and he here we will do something a little different uh, once we verify the uh, username. But now we're just going to immediately go to a, a web page, and this is a page that has malicious code. This could be, in our example, is very simple. We're just going to deliver the printer driver in the background. Um, this could be in a real environment, um, some malicious JavaScript that would trigger a uh, few, uh, maybe uh, you know, a few bounces around the network and then deliver the driver uh, from another location. But again, you see the same type of behavior. This point and print um, uh, functionality working over the network, over the web page, and the same type of results uh, are, are available. So again, the same thing that we saw happen on the inside of the network can now happen over an internet connection. And again, really kind of exposes this uh, type of threat to, at, at a kind of new level, the, uh, the uh, footprint and availability of this attack for an outside attacker becomes uh, really, really immense. So with that, we will wrap up. I hope this has been informative. There is a much more in-depth uh, technical blog from the Vector Threat Labs team that goes into the details of this vulnerability and the tools that were used in the demonstration as well as some others. Uh, certainly check out that blog if you'd like a more deep dive analysis and reach out to us if you have any questions or uh, would like to learn more about protecting your network from um, threats that are behavioral in nature or may take advantage of Internet of Things and IoT devices. Thanks for your time and we look forward to speaking with you soon.